Hey guys, you're watching Dansky, and in this tutorial, you're going to learn how to create a radial swirl effect all in Adobe Photoshop. But before we get started, I just wanted to let you know that I partnered recently with MSI for their Creator Awards 2022. And this is a design competition with three categories, graphic design, 3D design, and film. And I'm one of the judges for the 3D category. So if that sounds like fun and you'd like to enter the competition, there will be a link below with more information and you've got until the 31st of May. Now, another part of this collaboration was to produce a tutorial using one of MSI's devices. And for that video, I chose their Z16 laptop, which packs a punch in terms of performance in addition to a beautiful QHD Plus display that runs at 120 hertz. So everything looks super smooth. Not to mention it looks absolutely stunning as far as the design goes. So using the Z16 laptop, I produced a tutorial which involved recreating and animating my workspace all in 3D using Blender. And there's a card on screen if you'd like to check out that tutorial. So there you go. Today you get two videos. So good luck to anyone who does decide to enter the Creator Awards. But now we're going to hop into Photoshop and get started. So we're now in Photoshop, but before we start, this is a trick that I learned from a YouTube channel called Sesso. So Sesso, if you're watching, thanks for teaching me this trick, mate. It's really cool and I absolutely love this style. So in this video, I'm going to be using some of these techniques and I'm going to really try and make the final design my own. And if you have a go at this yourself, you can tag me at Forever Dansky on both Twitter and Instagram, and I'd love to see what you come up with. Okay, so let's get started. First, I have a new document, 3840 by 2160 pixels, and I've picked three colors that I've put up in the top left corner. So you can pick three colors of your choice and then select the background and then go over to the paint bucket tool. Now I've got black selected as my foreground color. I'm going to click and fill the background with black. Next, add a new layer and select the brush tool. Now from the brush drop down at the top, I'm going to select Photoshop's hard round brush and you can adjust the size using the slider at the top or you can press the left and right square brackets on your keyboard. So now I'm going to grab the eyedropper tool and I'm going to sample one of those three colors. So first I'm gonna go with the top one, the lightest color, select the brush tool, and then just place some dots around all at different sizes. This can be totally random, just fill the canvas with a whole bunch of dots using that first color and try and make it as random as possible. That looks pretty good. Let's use the eyedropper tool to sample that second color and do the same thing again. There we go, that's looking pretty good. And you guessed it, we're gonna do the same thing for the third color as well. This is the darkest color. Although they don't have to go from light to dark, these can be three completely random colors. And I've tried this technique a few times now and my final design is always completely different. You never know quite what you're gonna get. Okay, I'm just going to rename this layer swirl one, right click and convert this to a smart object. There we go. Next, I'm gonna go to filter, down to blur and select radial blur. Now you can play around with the settings here. Let's just move this out of the way. And these are the settings that I'm using. So 20 on the amount, click OK, and you'll get something that looks like this. And we're gonna go and repeat that step two or three more times. There we go. Now we're going to create a new layer. And we're going to use the eyedropper tool to sample that first color again and use the brush tool to add in some more dots. So as you can see, we're literally just repeating all of those initial steps on another layer. There we go, that looks good. Let's name this layer Swirl2. And again, I'm going to right click this and convert it to a smart object. Now we're going up to filter and again, apply that radial blur two or three times. Now I'm going to select both of the swirl layers and the background holding shift. And I'm going to right click this and convert all of these into a single smart object. Let's give this a name. And then I can right click this layer duplicate it, and I'm gonna call this Swirl Highlights. Now it's time to go to Filter, down to Filter Gallery, and I'm going to select Plastic Wrap. 
Sorry, I'm laughing because I haven't been in the filter gallery for so long, but this effect is really cool. And you can click around and try different effects and you get a preview of how it looks with a few settings on the right. But as I mentioned, we're gonna go with plastic wrap and I'm gonna play around with the sliders for a moment and ultimately use these sliders to add some subtle highlights to the design. Well, I mean, they're not that subtle, but this will look much better, I promise. So there we go, it's looking kind of terrible at the moment. So let's fix that by going to Filter, down to Blur, and select Motion Blur. Just kidding, we're using Radial Blur, as if we're going to use anything else. So click OK, we'll let the spinny wheel do its thing, and there we go, that looks much better now. So let's go and repeat that again, and this is going to blend these highlights into the design much more seamlessly. Now this next step's pretty cool, we can change the blending mode from Normal to, well, anything you like and of course you get that real-time preview so find something you're happy with i think in this example i'm going to go with screen and this blends those white highlights a little bit more with the green in the design and now from the bottom of the layers panel i'm adding a gradient map adjustment layer and i can use this to remap the light and dark areas in my design to specific colors so what i can do now is click on the gradient slider and you'll see in a moment i'm going to create my own custom gradient and fine tune the colors until i get the design exactly how i want it And as you can see, I'm moving the swatches around on the slider, and this can help me make one color more dominant over another. So that's looking pretty good now. I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to add a new layer. Now that middle area is looking quite awful, so I'm going to select the ellipse tool, and then left click and hold shift to create a perfect circle. And then from the properties panel, I'm going to set the stroke to none, and then I'm going to select the fill, Click on this icon over here, and then I'm going to use the eyedropper tool to sample the background color. It's like a very, very dark green. I can now position this in the center and use free transform, which is command or control T to adjust the size. And I'm going to increase the size slightly so it covers that mess in the middle. And if you want to get it bang on in the middle, go to select all and then use the alignment tools at the top to make sure that circle is dead center. You can then deselect. And now we can resize it holding Alt or Option and Shift and it's going to remain central. So we don't need to realign it again. So I could just decide how big I want the hole to be at this point. And once you're happy, go to Filter, down to Blur and select Gaussian Blur. Finally, something other than Radial Blur. Okay, so we'll convert this to a smart object, give it a very slight amount of blur. The reason I'm doing this is because the ellipse we created is perfectly sharp and the rest of the design is very blurry. So by adding a little bit of Gaussian blur to this, it blends that hole we've made or that circle in the middle with the rest of the design. Okay, now I'm selecting everything and one last time converting it all to a smart object. Give this another name if you so choose. And then I'm going to go up to filter and down to camera raw filter. Now you get tons and tons of settings here and you can play around with these until your heart's content. And I found that in particular, adjusting the clarity here really can have a massive impact on emphasizing or de-emphasizing the highlights in the detail in your design. You can also change the color if you suddenly decide you don't like green and actually, well, I think blue's a bit better. And you can remap the shadows, midtones, and highlights to different colors. Honestly, you can spend hours in here fine tuning your design and this is all contained under a single smart filter. So if you want to edit those effects or delete them all together, you can do that from the layers panel. And you can see me here adding a little bit of grain as well. This is something that I like to do with a lot of my creative work, just a little bit of subtle noise. And there we go, that is the final design. And there we go, that wraps up the video. So hopefully you enjoyed this one as much as I did. Thank you to Sesso for teaching me this technique. I love, love, love this style. Remember you've got the Creator Awards linked below if you'd like to enter. You can like the video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time.